I have a confession to make. I've never smoked any food in my whole life. It's true. Never done it. I know roughly the idea of doing it. I know, think how to do it in theory. But I've never actually gone ahead and done it. So today, oh, and the reason for that is because I cook on a campfire. The food gets smoky, it gets smoke. But I don't have a smoker. I don't own one. I've never owned one. I've got like a little folding one, which at one point I'm going to do smoked fish in, but never actually got off my ass and done it. Um, so yeah, campfire cooking and you know your your kind of your big smoker setups are actually very different. Um, <clears throat> but mate of mine, Dave, uh, if you want to follow some fun cooking, but mainly a 600 horsepower Duramax Patrol, uh, his Instagram is going to be somewhere on the screen. Um, and Dave came up with an idea using an Osbri that I just love the look of. So I'm going to give it a crack. Start with. Just a reminder, in this video, somewhere in it, there is a code word. So you can comment that code word down below. Uh, I'm also, just a quick heads up, I'm taking a few weeks off while we've just had a new little baby, um, little Hugo Fisher. He was born on the 5th um, and he's doing well. We're all doing well, but uh, uh, the videos will continue, but I might not be as active on socials and comments and stuff like that. So just bear with me for a bit while I get over some sleep deprivation. You need some pork belly. Mmm, okay. So, I will kind of want to. Nah, uh, actually, I'll leave a little bit of moisture on there. I'm just going to use a rub. Uh, I have obviously never used this rub before because it's still sealed. No idea what it's like, but a mate of mine likes it and he's a pretty good cook, so I'm going to give it a crack. So, start with, we're going to rub these guys down. Now this recipe takes about four or five hours, but good thing is I don't need to really do anything in that time. All I need to do is keep the fire going and I can do that. And I don't even need to keep a good fire going because the whole point of this is that they're smoky. So <clears throat> if you want to make your own kind of rub, you're obviously welcome to. You don't need to go and buy a barbecue rub. Um, it's basically just a combination of sugar, salt, and whatever spices you like. Usually like a bit of paprika, um, that sort of thing. I can't even think of others. What have they got in this? I'm actually going to be working with a company. Uh, salt, pepper, uh, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and some other herbs and spices. Um, I'm actually working with a company soon to design my own rub, but it's going to be very different to these these kinds of rubs. There will be these kinds of rubs, but mine are going to be more like a, basically just like a big shaker of really nice seasoning to go on different things. I'm really excited about getting those out there. A few months away, but they're going to be good. Now, get an Osbri. So I'm going to use the big boy, the camp bri, because it's a bit more stable. So if you're doing something for a long period of time, I like to use a more stable one because all it takes is a bit of a wind or a bit of a whatever to ruin your meal. But I'm obviously spoiled because I have both the travel bri and the camp bri on the floor. Now, fat all facing the same way. You want them pretty much, you want them close to each other, but with a gap. So I've got about an, an inch gap here. Um, and the reason for that is that you want the smoke to be able to get all over them. Now, if, you, if you're gonna do this with like, with pork, you wanna use something like chuck or something that's really like quite fatty and a, just a well marbled piece of meat because this has the potential to dry out a lot. But let's hope it doesn't. Now, I'm gonna show you the party piece. This here is the secret to all of this. A big bit of jar. And what we wanna do is put a tiny bit of heat on the edge of this bit of jarra, not so that it burns cleanly, so that it burns dirty. There's no wind today, everything's just going up, and that's fine. It'd be pretty easy to control. If there is wind, you want your meat downwind. Now, I'm gonna hang this, start fat side out, 
hang this here. And the idea <clears throat> is this smoke is going to come up and slowly smoke this, this meat. Now we want this at about sitting around 100 degrees ambient temperature um, around those pieces of meat um, for about three hours. Sit back, relax, um, as pieces of wood wear out, you just chuck new ones on. Uh, no rush with any of it. Let the smoke get in there. Let's see what happens. I mean, it looks right. It's going darker. That's good. But the smoke's the main thing. The thing is we're slow cooking this, so it's impossible to kind of overcook it. The only thing you can really do is burn it. But you can't cook it for too long. The fat will keep it moist. All right, this is my kind of cooking. Sit here, watch a fire, and enjoy a beer. Fred, do you wanna come up? All right, so it's been on for about an hour and the bottom is cooking a little bit faster than the top, which is logical because there's more heat down the bottom. So we'll quickly flip this over. Just push that down a bit. Doesn't have to be all the way. I might just, I might do all the way though. Open them up. You need to have the handle out a little bit so that it'll clamp closed. And you can see it's on a different angle to what it was before. I've just been sort of, one of them was cooking a little bit faster than the others, so I just moved around a little bit. And I've put this big, big bit of wood on there, which is the opposite of what you'd normally do with a fire, but I kind of want it to smother it slightly and give it a bit more smoke. All right, it's been an hour and 45 minutes, and I'm thinking about trying to get a little bit of crackle onto this thing, because it looks good, it's getting the right color, but, I'd like to get some crackle on early. You should crackle pork before you slow cook it, I guess. So, not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna try and get really amazing crackle because it is gonna be slow cooked later on, but I'm gonna see what I can work out here. So, let's frame. Do something dodgy. This is only gonna be for 10 odd minutes. There's a bit of heat right here, so I'm thinking something like that. Yeah, like maybe crackle's the wrong word. I just want some kind of, I want the skin to crisp up and harden up a little bit, but it doesn't have to be like amazing crackle. Smoke and crackle. It's funny, I've been cooking on fire for years, but there's one thing that you just cannot ever take your eye off, and that is, oh, look at that. That's already starting to crackle. So this side, which is that side, is um, cooking a bit faster. So that's only been on there for about three or four minutes, I reckon. Actually, this might be easy without the frame. Yeah, just do that. Cool. Yeah, it's just one of those things crackling. You just need to check every, honestly, like minute, 30 seconds, minute. Yeah, because these are gonna be put in sauce later on, it's not gonna stay that amazing crispy crackly, but you do want it to be broken down so that you can chew through it. All right, that's looking good enough for me. Might just go that middle bit, tiny bit more. Sorry, my audio has been all over the place. I just got some new stuff and some of it has been good and some of it has been really unreliable. So yeah, be careful what you get out there. All right, so it's been three hours. I've had a beer and a Ronda, 
I'm feeling quite nice. It's been a lovely afternoon. And you can see these don't actually get that hot. So take that off with my hands and let's go make the rest of this. Okay, so let's get the sauce ready, which involves some stuff around. Some alfoil, aluminium foil. I think only Australians call it alfoil, don't we? We abbreviate everything. Servo, bottle-o, smoke-o. Okay. Chuck these guys in the alfoil. Or aluminum foil. We're going to still need that. Put them all the same way. So I'm going to do these skin side up. For, oh, shall I want to have a little, little. Yeah, it's really good. Mmm, nice smoke. Nice, um, mmm. Nice bit of sugar from the, um, from the rub. I'm going to try a little bit of the meat, actually, as well. That is good. But, I want to take it a step further. Hold on, let me get some stuff. <clears throat> we want to level this up. We want to take, take it somewhere it hasn't been before. And a mate of mine, Derek Wolf, over the fire cooking on Instagram. And, you know, the talk tick and stuff. He's got like millions of followers. Uh, really good bloke. I took the idea of doing this teriyaki burnt ends pork belly thing from him, uh, but I'm obviously adapting it to a camping situation. His users, his users a smoker. So, butter, lots of butter. I don't know how much that is, maybe 50 grams. I'm gonna drop that in there. I'm gonna get some teriyaki sauce. Now, out of the bottle teriyaki sauce is very average. It's, it's not very good. People overseas, oh. That's a good one actually, kick him and that's a nice one. So, first up before I spill it everywhere, bring up the edges a little bit. And we're gonna put maybe like four tablespoons in there. We want a fair bit. We want this to be like glossy and it's got a lot of sugar in teriyaki. Um, uh, bugger it, I'm gonna add some more butter. You don't eat the butter, you just have it in there to, again, make everything glossy and nice. Oh yes, I just can't stop. All right, so it looks sort of like, hopefully you can see that on that camera. There's a fair bit in there. But to level any bottled, almost any bottled teriyaki sauce up, there are two ingredients that I just have always added and I can't be bothered making my own teriyaki sauce from scratch. The recipe is actually probably on my website as well as on all the teriyaki videos I've done. And it's definitely in my book. I think it's on my website. Maybe it's not. I don't, actually I don't think it is on my website. But it's definitely in the book. So, I don't know why I grabbed two cloves, but clove of garlic. Actually, because this is all going to be just in there together. I'm just going to chop it. I'm not even going to bother grating it. This changes bottled teriyaki sauce from that kind of generic sauce to like really fresh restaurant flavor teriyaki. It, it really does make such a dramatic difference. And we'll grab a little bit of ginger, kind of roughly take some of the edges off. All right, probably don't need all that, but yeah, chuck a decent amount in there. I just love, I love fresh ginger. Trying out these new bags as well. Put the name on the screen. And as usual, all the links to everything I'm using is on the gear page on my website. Um, they're quite a cool idea. They're like a washable food scrap bag. Uh, I throw most of my food scraps on the fire the night before, but it's the morning stuff that always I always end up taking home. Um, and I use bags like this usually 
which are like mesh bags um, from from uh, Outback Cleanups, the recycled shade cloth bags, and they're really good um, because I don't have to use bin bags because I use them for recycling and just like plastic wrappers and things like that. So nothing that drips. But this is quite this is a good option for stuff that drips. I think now. The idea here is we're going to put it back in the Osbrite, wrap it up, put it back in the Osbrite once it's had another wrap around it because I don't really want this thing to leak. But you also don't want too much alfoil over it or it honestly just takes ages to get warm and cook. Now, test, not leaking. Leaking, so I'll fix that. You can also do this with like barbecue sauce and you know, all your sort of more traditional American barbecue sauces. Here's me telling you not to use too much alfoil as I like completely smother it. Just means I have to use more heat, I guess, which is easy. Okay, not leaking, not leaking, cool. Now this doesn't need any pressure on it, so you can have this um, at the highest level. And that's it, that's how it's going on. All right, so my plan is to make two sort of fires, one for like warmth and stuff, and then one for doing this so I want a little bit of heat there not tons enough that it'll keep going and I'm, I'm just gonna leave it on the highest setting because it's easier to flip and stuff now we're gonna do this for about two hours so strap in grab a beverage relax All right, so it's been about an hour and 15 minutes. And I wanna check this, because it smells good. And I just wanna make sure that all the moisture's still there, because as I said, I've never done this stuff before. I'm a lot of cooking, but not this. Whew, very hot. Sorry, friend. Can confirm. Smell is 10 out of 10. Nothing looks burnt, but it's like caramelized and brown, which is all good. It's all good stuff. All right, I'm gonna call that done. I'm just gonna wrap it back up in foil to rest. Okay, now I've had a little bit of rice here on the side soaking. because I want to rest that for a good sort of 10, 15 minutes at least. So do a bit of sushi rice because it's Japanese. Not tons, it's just me. There's quite a lot of food there. I'll chuck this on the fire and we'll quickly chop up our toppings and garnishes. So a bit of green onion, spring onion, whatever you want to call it. Scallions. All different names for this stuff. Awesome. And a bit of chili. Now teriyaki doesn't traditionally have chili, uh, but I like it in this sort of situation where it's kind of, I don't know, a fusion of American and um, and then Japanese. I don't, know, I don't think I've ever, I can even think of any Japanese um, smoked food. Eel, smoked eel, unagi. All right, I reckon the rice is probably like three minutes away, four minutes away, so I'm just gonna start on this, because I'm excited. Okay. A 
that's definitely going to go in the mucky bin. <laughs> okay, the crackling's pretty much gone, but I'm glad I still cooked the skin, because otherwise the skin would be hard. So let's just see how, how it is. I want it to still have some firmness to it. I don't want it to be like falling apart like pulled pork, but I want the fat to be rendered. Mmm. The texture's perfect. It's not as strong teriyaki flavor as I would have thought, in a good way. I wasn't sure if it was just going to be like a big sticky teriyaki bomb, which I deliberately got the teriyaki sauce out for. Mmm. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. All right, let's chop this up. Oh, I love that slight bit of crispy, chewy, whatever it is for the skin. Uh, I don't know, As it's, I don't, I can't, it's really hard to describe. It's like that, not leatheriness, but I don't know. There's a, there's a texture of well-cooked pork skin that I really like, that's not crackled. Okay, get some rice. Fluffed rice, good. Should try and do a little fancy mound? Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty bloody good for the bush. Shit. Now, oh, now I've got the pressure on me to actually make the rest of it look decent. I'm not used to this. That was like right in the middle and got the nice new plates and god that's way better than i expected i don't know how to present stuff do i pile it up like that or do i have it out i don't know please tell me okay i don't know how to put green stuff on you just put green stuff on there's some green stuff and then we'll just put some red stuff on there as well Jeez, this definitely deserves gratuitous B-roll. Oh, actually, what I want to do is put a little bead of, of teriyaki sauce around it. Oh, seriously, come on. That's, that might be the best presentation I've ever done on this channel or in my life. Let's do this. I'm quite proud of myself. Which you'll just be wrong. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I'm just, I'm not even going to say it. I didn't bring chopsticks. God damn it. Every time. Try with some chili. It's very good. If I was served this at a restaurant, I'd be very happy. Is it worth five hours? No. I think I could make a teriyaki chicken or a teriyaki beef in a lot less time that would taste just as good. Um, but it is excellent. I don't know. As an experience, as a thought process, as a this is stage one of learning to smoke stuff. So this is first try. I'm taking you with me on the journey. Let's see how we go in the future. But Does it go well with beer? My favorite beer, CBCO IPA. My favorite type of food, Japanese. Favorite, one of my favorite types of meat, pork belly. Let's see how we go. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> oh, wow. That is a really lovely combination at camp. Look, one of my favorite meals in the world, maybe even my favorite meal in the world, 
is teriyaki wagyu. Is this as good? I don't think so. Is it good? Absolutely. I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to comment the code word. Yum.